Well, it's great to be with you today. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If you have your Bibles, uh, just open up with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to go ahead and pray and ask God to speak to us today, and we'll jump into His Word. Father, thank you so much, God. We're blessed to have this time together, and we pray that you would guide us by your Spirit and speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today we're going to start in verse 14, and the Bible says this, For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died, and he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Look, a real simple question for you today is, is this, what motivates you? What drives you? Like when you get up in the morning, what is it that uh, enables you to crawl out of that nice, warm, comfortable bed uh, and then get ready and, and head out for your day? Now, the truth is there may be all sorts of different motivations that we have, and, and for sure there are all sorts of different missions that we have, but for the Christian, the motivating force, the compelling force, the driving force for everything that we do in our life should be, I mean, as Paul says here, it should be the love of Christ. Like at the root, at the root of everything that we do in every role that we fulfill, whether it's as a child of God or whether it's as a spouse or as a friend uh, or as a parent or as somebody's kid, you know, at the root of all of our motivations and drives should be the love of Christ. And the way that Paul uh, says it, it, it's like this. Paul says, man, you know, for the love of Christ compels us, it drives us, it motivates us. It's the, the root source of all things because this is what we judge. This is the clear conviction that we've, we've had. We, we, look at, we look at the gospel, and this is the conclusion that we make, that if one died for all, right, if Jesus died for all those who put their faith in him, then all those people have themselves died for the one, right? So this is kind of like a reciprocal relationship here. Well, how do we view our lives? Because as we put our faith in Christ, truly the gospel has changed our perception, you know, our perspective on the way that we live our lives and what our lives are about. And, and how has that revolution happened? Well, the revolution begins with recognizing that there was a sacrificial life that was lived. There was a sacrificial gift that was given. Jesus didn't just live a perfect life and then die a normal death. He lived a perfect life and sacrificially gave himself. He, he died for us. And if he gave himself as a sacrifice, then those who put their trust and faith in him live, check this out, they live sacrificially for him. And that's why the Apostle Paul says here that they should live no longer for themselves. Man, if there's anything that is countercultural, it's that statement right there. Because you know the culture around us says, man, live for yourself, look out for number one, make sure that, um, that above all things you're considering your own desires and your own dreams and fulfilling you know, your own ambitions. And the Bible says, no, the gospel has radically transformed the way that we view ourselves. And in fact, uh, we don't live for ourselves anymore. We die to ourselves. You know, Jesus was really clear about this when he said, if you want to be my disciple, you need to deny yourself. You need to d die to those fleshly desires. You need to pick up your cross and you need to follow me. So today, listen, let's drop our lives into that context, the context of the gospel. Like we don't live outside the gospel as Christians. We live within it. Uh, and he has transformed the way that we view our lives because of it. And there are things for sure today that we probably need to die to. And the Holy Spirit's going to show you what those things are. You might say, well, how do I die to those things? Well, you die to those things by living to God. So listen, in other words, if today you say, God, I'm going to live for you and towards you in everything. You know, I'm going to live sacrificially because the love of Christ your Son is what drives me. It's what motivates me. If you do that, then by nature, naturally, you are going to die to all those things that, that aren't God's best for you. Let's, let's live. Let, listen, it's, it's been done for us, right? This is not something that we attain or achieve. Let's live to that today. Let's live to God and let's allow our lives to reflect this new motivating, compelling force 
that is at work within us, and that is the love of Christ. God bless you guys today. Have a good day.